Hello and welcome to another episode of the Top 3 Pen series. My name is Jos Oppelbaum and every Monday we post a new video about the personal Top 3 Pens of Penfluencers. If you do not want to miss out on a video, subscribe to our YouTube channel now. Most of our Top 3 videos are about modern pens, but today we have a real thread for three. This is toch niet thread. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Top 3 Pen series. My name is Joost Appelboom and every Monday we post a new video about the personal Top 3 Pens of Penfluencers. If you don't want to miss out on a video, subscribe to our channel. Most of our Top 3 videos are about modern pens, but today we have a real treat for those of you who are into classic fountain pens. We got in touch with Steph from Grammia Pens, a YouTube channel entirely dedicated to vintage pens if you feel like drooling over some amazing pens from the older days or if you want to find out how to do maintenance on these beauties you should definitely pay this channel a visit but for now let's enjoy Steph's top three favorite pens hi guys Steph here from Grammy Pens some of you will know me from my YouTube channel where I review fountain pens, um, I'm a collector and a restorer of predominantly vintage fountain pens. Now I'd like to thank Joost and Christine from Apple Bloom for inviting me to talk about my top three pens. Now as a collector I have a few pens and to be quite honest with you I'm very very fussy with the sorry with the pens that I actually collect so yes it was very very difficult to come up with three pens and well basically to talk about them and give you the reason why because for me personally from the very beginning fountain pens has been it's been a journey for me and the journey is still ongoing um, with regards to pens, we learn something new every day, something comes in sort of new every day. So it's an ongoing journey that started many, many years ago. So with regards to my, my three top pens, they, yeah, they're actually part of that journey and more so from the beginning of my journey. So, without further ado, let me introduce to you my, my three top pens. Now, the first pen, which is, well, has some sort of a meaning to it for me, um, nice and simply, when I was young at school, I always remember my parents buying me my first fountain pen. And that first fountain pen, I remember being a Parker 51, a grey Parker 51. And ever since then, although at the time pen, the pen was just a, it was just a writing instrument, whatever, I do not know where that pen actually went. There was no interest for me at that particular time with regards to pens, etc. But I think somewhere subconsciously in my mind, it actually stuck there. And even to this day, I've got a, well, I've got this liking for Parker 51s. But this specific pen that I've got um, was gifted to me from a good friend of mine. Um, and that friend of mine is called Alan. Now, what actually happened, again at the beginning of my journey, when I, when I was actually beginning to sell fountain pens um, and restore them, etc., at the very beginning, um, I actually went, or I was actually at a car boot sale or a garage sale, as some of you people will know it as. And when I was actually at that car boot sale, um, I was talking to one of the stall holders regarding a specific pen and once it actually finished I felt a tap on my shoulder, I turned round, there was a gentleman there um, he turned around and he said to me 
Is your name Stefan? So I looked upon him with surprise. I said, well, yes, why? He said, my name's Alan. And I thought, Alan? Who's Alan? Because it was just a, such a by chance meeting. As it turns out, it was Alan, the gentleman that was buying pens from me at the beginning. Now before that, Alan, he was just another name and an address on the other side of my keypad. But at this specific period, at this time, out of the blue, I met up with Alan. We had a very good chat, we had a cup of coffee, and ever since then, we've become very good friends. Um, I go round regular to his house, we talk pens, we talk repairs. Um, when, well, when we can, because of the uh, sort of the epidemic at the moment, we also go to a lot of the pen shows together. So people around the pen shows, they see us together um, and greet us and it's very sociable, it's very nice. So the reason that this pen is very important to me is that Alan actually gifted it to me. And as I say, it's a Parker 51. It's a plum Parker 51 with a luster, luster alloy cap, beautiful condition. It's a aerometric fountain pen. I'm dating the pen around about the 1950s, but it's a gorgeous pen. So this pen is important to me because I made a friend from, from pens, if you like. We became very good friends, all through a mutual interest in fountain pens. And I'm sure there's a lot of you people out there that are in a similar position, that you make friends from people that have a similar interest as you people with pens. So, that was my first pen. It's a lovely pen gifted to me by Alan, and I sort of cherish it because we've become, as I say, very, very good friends. Excuse me one moment. My second pen is a Anotto Magna and the model is the 1703 in beautiful black. It's got a lovely chase pattern, gold trim, gorgeous pen. As you can see, it's in beautiful condition. In my opinion, the condition as if it's just come out of the factory. It's absolutely stunning. I love it. Now the reason this pen is important to me, nice and simply, again, at the beginning of that journey that we talked about, out of the blue I received a phone call from a friend of a friend, if you like, and the lady spoke to me, she said, um, I believe you're interested in fountain pens. Yes, I am, I said. She said, I found some pens here where I'm the clear out and wondered if they'd be of interest to you. So I promptly went round. It was only literally round the corner from where, from where I actually live. I went round and on the table was, a, if you like, a biscuit tin full of not just, well, not all pens. There was some some fountain pens, there was ballpoints, pencils, there was uh, the old type wooden sort of dip pens and nibs etc. It was just a mishmash in this biscuit tin. The lady said to me quite simply, um, would you be interested? I looked at him and I said, yeah, I mean I saw a couple of pens that I thought, oh yeah, they look quite interesting. And she said, well, I want £20 for him, otherwise I'll, I'll just throw them out. £20? I wouldn't even, I didn't even want to argue or negotiate a price. I promptly then gave her £30  
and said, there you go, there's a little bit extra because I appreciate the fact that you, you called me and gave me the opportunity. So she was over the moon. I was happy. I promptly went home, put the tin on my desk and began to rummage through them. I found a couple of um, sort of the more, the later are not old pens, I forget, I forget the specific models. <coughs> I think there was a couple of Parker, there was a lot of trash that basically just simply went in the bin. But at the bottom, as I sort of parted the waves of the pens, I picked it up and look at that. A beautiful Anotto Magna 1703 in lovely condition. And that, because I've actually got a liking for the Anotto pens, I've had them ever since I started this journey. It was one of my Grail pens. And look at that, the Grail pen found me. How good is that? So, from all this sort of trash and these pens and bits and bats, as I say, my Grail pen, the Anotto Magna, actually found me. So, that is the reason this pen is on my list. It is my baby. It is one of my, in fact, I think it is my favourite pen in my collection. Although, I've got some very nice ones, but this one is up there at the top of the list. Let's have another little sip. Number three of my top three pens. Look at this. This is the Wall Eversharp Oxford Fountain Pen in this lovely sort of green, uh, sort of blue marbling with a lovely nib as you can see there. An absolutely gorgeous pen. Again, from the beginning of my journey, I do not recall where this specific pen came from. I just remember, I'm actually, when I got it, I remember restoring it. It came out absolutely gorgeous. It was lovely and it went straight into uh, my pen collection. Now, quite a number of years ago, um, I sort of decided just on the spur of the moment, um, I actually gifted it to my father on his birthday and this was again I can't remember how many years ago quite a long time ago so I gave him this pen because I thought there's something in there you know that I've done it's a pen that I've restored it's a lovely pen so on his birthday I said well there's your present dad there's a and he opened it it was a pen oh he loved it etc and it, and it stayed with him for many many years now, unfortunately, uh, only last year, uh, my father passed away. So, in the meantime, when we actually sort of, you know, sorting everything out, you know, basically sorting his estate out or whatever, um, this pen came back into my possession. It's in my collection. I love the pen, it's a gorgeous pen, and the fact that, yeah, that I gave it to my father, and my father had it for numerous years, has a little bit of, yeah, it's got a sentimental value uh, to it. So that is my third pen, the gorgeous Wall Eversharp Oxford, because, yeah, it was my father's pen, it came back to me, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I sort of treasure it, and it has, as I say, sentimental value. 
and that's it. That is a little bit, just a fraction of that long, long journey which began many, many years ago. I can't remember, I can't remember how many years, but as I said earlier, the journey is still ongoing. And the nice thing about it, as you saw with these three pens, along that particular journey, things happen and pens have, they have a meaning to people. Um, pens enable people to become friends and it's lovely and that's why I enjoy my journey with pens so so much so I hope you've enjoyed my three pens I hope you've enjoyed looking at them and for now I'll just say bye-bye for now.